Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows, so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we are baptized in Christ Jesus, we are baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Psalm number 8. 
It reads, O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the work of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And here ends our reading. Our second lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, the ninth chapter, beginning in the 36th verse. And it reads, Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed at Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, Tanner. Here ends our reading. Well, we have two passages. First, Psalm number 8, which is a, oh, I'm sorry, I should say, grace and peace to you. From God our Creator, and from Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, we've got two passages today. The first, Psalm 8, it's a creation psalm. It shows about um, all the things God has created. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, what are human beings that you're mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? And then the psalm goes on about how he put humans in charge of farms, of creation, of things like animals and land. And our second lesson is the woman Tabitha, also known as Dorcas, and she was a sower, and she did lots of good stuff. And people were saying she had died. And Peter came by and prayed for her and rose her back to life. Now, before I get back to those two um, passages, I want to just talk about Mildred. Who was Mildred? Well, I would say she was the whole package. She really was. A long list. Flowers and plants. Um, stories I remember um, hearing from family of when she was um, younger, helping out with farm work. She loved it when she was more young and able was playing cards and games. It was puzzles. Um, I was watching birds and squirrels feeding them. Um, it was her matchstick crosses. It was her sewing and her quilting and crocheting. And even more than those things, it was family. It was her children grandchildren, and she even got to be a great-grandmother, or great-great-grandmother, two greats. So 
children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, and great great grandchild. It's kind of a whole package. Now, the reason we, we go with Psalm 8, the reason we uh, read Psalm 8 is, is remember, it's a creation psalm. God, what, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the work of your fingers, that's ancient sewing language. As though God knits together, sews together the stars and the moon. That's creation stuff. And then the woman Tabitha, her name also Dorcas in Greek. What did Tabitha do? Well, lots of good stuff. But she was into creation as well. She sewed clothes for people. More creation stuff. And I think the reason we read those lessons is because that really gets to who Mildred was. She was a creator. All of the things that she loved were in creating things. Flowers and plants creating life. Farm work creating food and sustenance for other people. Cards and games and puzzles <coughs> creating fellowship and friendship with others. Feeding birds and squirrels creating life. Matchstick crosses, more creation, crafts, and sewing and quilting and crocheting, creating things for others, and then the big thing, family. Participating in God's creation, so that it goes on. Weaving together, sewing together, just like God does that with the moon and the stars. Mildred did that with everyone here. That's why we read these lessons, because Mildred was a creator. Now, today isn't so much for Mildred as it is for all of us gathered here together, because death hurts, and death stings, and death is hard, and death is painful. It doesn't matter if you're young, it doesn't matter if you're 96. It hurts. It hurts those who are left behind. It hurts the family that she created, that she weaved together. Well, that's the difficulty. But where's the gospel? Where's the good news? The good news, the gospel is found in that story of Tabitha. And what happens? Peter put all of them outside. And he knelt down and prayed, and he turned to the body, and he said, Tabitha, get up. And then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. Well, that's the good news. Now, Mildred's rising is much in the same. It might not look completely like this story, but it's the good news, the hope that we have in eternal life. Rejoining, perhaps, the biggest of all creation, the communion of saints, those who've gone before us. That's the gospel. How, oh, through the work of God, Peter raised up Tabitha, just like Mildred is raised for us. And that gets us to where we are next. In all the difficulty and all the hardness, guess what? All the challenge, we too get raised. We too are like Tabitha, raised by God. That's the gospel, the good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We sing our hymn of the day in the garden.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and not the He descended to the dead. session, um, the response to God of mercy is hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Almighty God, in a holy baptism you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our Help us, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our We've seen our hymn, The Old Rugged Cross.
Let us commend Mildred to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. In your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Mildred. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. Amen. We sing our sending him, Glory be to Jesus. serve the Lord.